Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we move a little bit in space and time to Northeastern Africa, and I will be speaking about uh, the research we have been doing on burial traditions in late Pleistocene and early Holocene Northeast Africa. Human burials constitute the most direct evidence for the study of human history. Besides biological data, burials also provide a plethora of data pertaining to social practice, cultural behavior, and identity. Cultural aspects of burials may, but do not have to overlap with biology, and they should be studied independently. In Africa, fossil human remains are extremely scarce prior to MIS-2, that is before 29KA. Most of them are isolated fragments or scattered remains with formal burials constituting very rare finds. You can see the location of, of four of them. The number and size of assemblages of human remains increased only in MIS-2 after 29KA and in MIS-1 after 14.7KA. This increase permits to engage in a study of funerary behavior among hunter-gatherers in Africa and, for the first time, also to address the issues of burial traditions and their spatio-temporal aspects. Here we aim to investigate these very issues. We focus on Northeastern Africa, which is a region with an unprecedentedly large number of human remains dating to the late Pleistocene and early Holocene. Despite this wealth, no attempts have been made so far to explore the finds stemming from different regional research traditions collectively to gain new insights into the cultural processes in this region. And let us not forget that this period is characterized by dramatic climatic changes, substantial movements of people, and major changes in a settlement. The findings of our own field research in the area of the Six Nile Cataract in Central Sudan have put us in the position to engage in such a research. In this paper, we present the first step of our research that focused on the Nile Basin in what is today Egypt, Sudan, South Sudan, and Northern Kenya, area of Lake Turkana, and on the Horn of Africa. In this first phase, we ask the following two questions. Was there a characteristic burial tradition or distinctive burial tradition among late Pleistocene and early Holocene hunter-gatherers in Northeastern Africa? And if so, can we trace their transmissions and sources in space and time? Let's have a closer look at our uh, corpus. We have uh, 53 sites with uh, human remains. Four of them come from the sites we excavated in Central Sudan. The human remains uh, differ in the uh, detail that is available in the uh, literature. They differ also in the character, state of preservation. For that, we have to divide them into three, into six categories. Three categories constitute fragmentary remains, assemblages of uncertain dating or character, and assemblages not related to mortuary behavior. They contain 17 sites and they could, were not assessed further for their limited information value on early burial traditions in the region. The other three categories included 36 sites that were selected for detailed assessment on selected variables, with the level of detail one could obtain on the assemblages reduced with two of the categories by partial destruction of the remains by post-depositional processes, mostly erosion, or insufficient publication of the findings. Wherever possible, the following variables were recorded in our analysis, and in the following, we will give an overview of the aspects that are of importance for the two questions of the first phase of our research. Sites and their distribution. The red points on the map show uh, sites with the uh, burial, human burials uh, present. These are 36 sites. Gray points show the location of uh, other human remains that were not included for their uh, disputed relation to 
burial activity. You can see that uh, the evidence is distributed unevenly across the region with clear clusters and large gaps in between. And the absence of human burials in some regions could be an artifact of long-term research focused biases and publication strategies. It could be related to state of preservation with human burials destroyed, fragmented by diverse processes. Or actually, it could reflect uh, distinct funerary behavior in these regions or its absence in the period we study. Of the 36 sites, nine have human remains dated directly by radiocarbon. For the remaining 27 sites, only interval dating is available based on cultural attribution or indirect dating of associated finds, geochronology or stratigraphy. Based on these dates, the hunter-gatherer collections are assigned to four periods. One site falls within the MIS-2, three sites overlap with the end of MIS-2 and early MIS-1, one site falls within the MIS-1 somewhere before 8.7 Ka, and 31 sites fall within the post younger Dryas part of MIS-1. The 36 sites contain the remains of at least 440 individuals. On 13 sites, single burials are found, while further 12 assemblages contain between 2 and 9 individuals each. Of the remaining 11 sites, 5 contain medium-sized assemblages of between 10 to 19 burials, and five sites, more than 20 individuals, all of which are confined to the uh, Middle Nile Valley. There is a degree of uniformity in the region in site type and location of the burials with respect to settlement. All but one burial collection come from open air sites, and of 35 sites where data was available, 32 have burials within or close to settlement of the same period. There are three sites that differ from this pattern with no association with contemporary at the settlement attested. Interestingly, each of the latter sites shows other distinctive characteristics that differentiate them from the, the rest of the corpus. It is a frequency of violent death as Jebel Sahaba, extended burial under Cairn, and prone extended burials. As to burial selection in the assemblage, uh, there is a, a confirmed one against the youngest members of, uh, of the community which is uh, expressed as underrepresentation of perinates, neonates, and small children. Uh, in general, non-adults are about 16.5% of the uh, studied, uh, in the studied assemblages. So they are present, but not, uh, uh, not so largely. Uh, below you can see a graph we put together from the data available from uh, Jebel Sabaloka from El Barja and Jebel Sahaba, and it actually shows uh, this uh, demographic anomaly, which can be explained as a burial selection. As to the uh, proportion between male and female burials, again, medium and large sites with uh, where sex estimates are available show that both sexes are represented evenly. So there is no apparent burial selection in relation to sex in this area. Some distinctions only appear with isolated burials, among which those of males prevail, and in one small assembly where males are outnumbered by females. But uh, this can be also down to the small uh, size of the assemblage. As to the types of deposits, uh, there is a marked uniformity in all sites containing primary deposits. Secondary deposits are present at the uh, three uh, larger sites and are uh, due to uh, successive burying in the same area. Secondary burial at Ruwan is suggested only to be at to be present only at one site, Gogoshis Kabe in Somalia. In addition, specific attitudes to cadavers do occur but are very rare, and they include use of fire at three sites, artificial displacement of selected body parts within burial context, presence of incomplete skeletons, and in one case, there is a find of a modified human uh, long bone that could signify curation. As to body position, 30 sites show some degree of flexion in the lower legs. Again, it is a marked uh, uniformity. On four of these sites, there are hyperflex individuals as well, for which ropes or bags had to be used to bind the body. Extended burials occupy the opposite spectrum of, uh, of positions, are less common, and they occur as the only position at one site, marked in yellow, and co-occur with flex and contracted burials on other five sites. 
As you can see, there are different uh, types of, uh, of uh, extended burials with uh, some specific ones, including uh, prone burials with lower legs drawn close to buttocks. It's the top uh, example here. And then a spread out individual that was covered by a cairn. We also assessed consistency of burial rite, which was uh, measured by the consistency in deposition of the body, orientation, and spatial organization within burial area. And it is absent on 17 sites. You can see what the burial looked like at one of the sites we studied. And they are present in uh, one, two, or three aspects on uh, six other sites, with the burial ground at uh, uh, Jebel Sahba showing consistency in all three aspects. As to the grave woods, we considered uh, presence and frequency, but also uh, location of finds. There are 11 categories of finds identified associated with these human burials, and they include the uh, form of remains, mollusk, stone, and bone industry, pottery, pigment, and decorative items. Interesting is the distribution of finds. Up to four types occur within, with one individual. Three categories, grinders, bivalves, and ostrich eggshell beads, see yellow arrow, are more common, occurring on about one half of the site, and others, such as unworked crystal and MSA lithics in blue, are of more confined distribution, possibly reflecting some regional specifics. And only in two collections, at Lake Bisaka and Gogoshi Skabe in the south, we find items of high acquisition cost. So let's make some sense of all this data. In Northeast Africa, late Pleistocene burials are found only in the refugia along the Nile in Upper Egypt and around the modern Egyptian Sudanese border. The earliest are the eroded human burials found at Deir al-Fakhuri. More, more massive evidence comes from the burial grounds at Jebel Sahaba, Wadi Halfa, and Tushka. They are characterized by large burial assemblages and standardization of body position and orientation. In Sahaba, we also see an unusually high degree of spatial organization of the burial ground. All these facts suggest the presence of a well-developed burial tradition in the northern late Pleistocene refugia. During early Holocene, southern Egypt and the Sudan experienced an explosion of burying in the ground. However, several distinctive areas of funerary behavior can be identified here. First, it is the area of the Eastern Sahara. Despite abundant settlement location, this area has provided only eight individuals in total from seven sites. The area also features several particularities. At Wadi Shaw, it is a spread out individual underneath a cairn. At Napta, it's a partially burnt inhumation. And at Bargat El Shah, it is a find of uh, burnt bones of a child. It is evident that burial in the ground was not a norm in this area during the early Holocene. The local mortuary practices also contrast with the late place of sin burying at the Egyptian Sudanese border. The other area is Sudanese Nile Valley. From here, we have by far the largest number of sites and individuals in the whole of northeastern Africa. It is here that we find the largest burial ground that contain even more than 90 uncovered individuals. And it is here that we can speak of the presence of true cemeteries intended for a long-term use by most members of the local communities. The funerary behavior in the region is characterized by an irregular organization of burial grounds. Except for al Khidai, which may be somewhat earlier in day, uh, graves at all sites were dug into settlement deposits, which attest to a certain delay between the beginning of burial activity and settlement at these sites. The early Holocene funerary practices on the Nile are to some degree reminiscent of the, bury of the burying in the northern late western Sin refugia. However, the early burying, early Holocene burial grounds lack the regularity in the position and orientation of bodies that seem to have been the cause in the preceding period. But besides commonalities, uh, the, Holo the early Holocene sample on the Nile shows also distinctions between northern and southern parts of the Middle Nile and within the southern part as well. In central Sudan, grave boots are frequent. By contrast, they are particularly absent in the graves in the northern Sudan. Only one site is represented. And secondly, uh, it is only at the southern periphery of the Sudanese Nile that we encounter extended inhumations of adults at Shabona and al -Hidai. These cases signal an existence of a distinct burial tradition on the White Nile. A dividing line between the stated distinctive zones of funerary behavior on the Sudanese Nile 
roughly copies the borders between distinct early Holocene ceramic complexes of the Sudan at the same time. Central Sudan overlaps with the early Khartoum in red, uh, the northern Middle Nile with the Khartoum variant, and the burial sites of the eastern Sahara with al face in Abta Playa and the dotted wavy line and lucky Apotori orbit in eastern Sahara, the further south. Uh, the region of northern Kenya and African Horn contrasts with the foregoing regions with, the, with its lack of any homogeneity. Each site has its particularities. Lotagam shows a high consistency in the position and orientation of bodies not encountered elsewhere in the Holocene. Lake Besaka II features evidence of burning on inhumation in situ. The site is also the only one in the entire region where a find of modified human bone has been reported. Gogoshiska Bay is the only site where we encounter a deliberate secondary manipulation of parts of corpses. It is also in this entire region that the diversity of burial practices is likely to be related to cultural diversity. However, in this area we can characterize a burying as relatively well developed in terms of number of individuals per site as well as frequency of burial goods. It is only here that we find grave inclusions of high acquisition costs. And to conclude, we return to the two questions we asked at the beginning. Was there a characteristic burial tradition or distinctive burial traditions among late Pleistocene and early Holocene hunter-gatherers along the Nile? The answer is yes. There seem to have been characteristic burial traditions both among late Pleistocene and early Holocene hunter-gatherers in the section of the Nile Basin analyzed in this paper. And we can delimit these traditions in space and time. It is interesting and encouraging for future work that these burial traditions overlap with cultural provinces as defined on the basis of material culture and ways of life. As to the second question, can we trace the sources and transmissions of the burial traditions in space and time? This is a complex question. It contains the issues of temporality of burying and degree of affinity in burial traditions between regions. First, apart from two cases, no burials at the site in the study area are uh, precisely dated. The, hand, the bands on the graph represent only the maximum ranges for their dating. The temporal overlaps between burial sites appear, and no doubt often also is, illusory. The fact, in fact, there may have been gaps of several millennia between the sites that might have interrupted any transmissions of burial tradition. And second, if we break down the burial practices into single elements and compare them, there may appear only elusive affinity. For instance, in the region under study, we saw predominance of flex positions and burying at settlements. However, both elements are common across Africa and have no clear information value. Our results indicate that only the combining of multiple elements together makes sense. Only then we can see emerges, emerge distinctions that in examination of intensive group interactions have a similar power as multidimensional evaluation of material culture used for the portrayal of cultural identity. We think that search for connections across time and space would be possible only at the expense of arbitrary reductions of the complexity of real behavior. So, in, the light of, in this light, our conservative answer to the second question is no. We can't veritably trace the sources and transmissions of the identified burial traditions in space and time. But, better dating of the burial site may change this situation radically. Thank you for your attention. They come from uh, the sites in Sabaloka at two sites. They are from uh, local materials, rhyolite, and they are either uh, what appears to be middle Paleolithic uh, core or some. Uh, Katarina studied them, so she should uh, she could say in a, in a better uh, in better terms. And these are actually items that do not occur in the settlement de deposit anywhere, and are always placed directly on the bones or in some specific position with the uh, with the individual. There was one picture shown with like a hyper contracted burial with one of the cords put onto the shins. And if Katarina can say more about these uh, finds. Uh, 
Well, Balkan was a 